That's what they are going to say. So we know that the internal energy, the potential, elastic potential, has to be zero for all strains, for all possible strains. Well, let's consider one case in which this part here is zero. So one, one strain state, state that makes that the deviatonic part of the strain is zero. So then we will have to find that one half of t equal is e squared is equal to zero. Look that k, k is a material property that is constant. It doesn't depend on the strain. So if this is greater than zero, and e squared and two are positive values, what can we say about k? k is positive. Okay. So the deformation modulus has to be positive. Look, this, I mean, this agrees with our perception. This, all this agrees from the, from application of thermodynamic conditions, which I'm not entering into, but that's something that, that is the, the, the way that we use second principle of thermodynamics is just for limiting values of them, our properties. This is the first case. Look, what, what is this saying? This is saying that when we have some volumetric strain, okay, imagine that we produce a positive volumetric strain, increase of volume. We have to apply a, a mean stress, which is k times epsilon. Okay? Imagine that we have a situation in which we just produce compressions. Okay? Compression stresses. Your perception is how would be the, the volume of that material? Reduced or increased? Reduced. Reduced. So if sigma m is negative, E has to be negative. So k is positive. So what would happen if k was negative? That in that case, when I compress material, the volume increases. Uh, th that says that k is greater than zero. That is something, that's again what, what I said about the principle of thermodynamics, uh, the second principle of thermodynamics. It says that a material with a negative value of the volumetric modulus could be imagined, but it doesn't belong to the reality. Okay? Let's go back to that equation. Okay, this has to be fulfilled for any value of the strain. So for cases in which the volumetric strain is zero, but that strain is not, it's not zero. So finally, in these cases, it has to happen that mu epsilon prime times epsilon prime is greater than zero. But look, this is a scalar. One tensor, double dot, the same tensor, is always a positive value. Why? Because the double dot of one tensor times the same tensor is just taking every component of the matrix of components and squaring it and summing them up. So it's epsilon one one squared plus epsilon one two squared plus epsilon one three squared, etc., etc. So all the terms are zero positive. So this has to be greater or equal than zero. Okay. So that means when some of these terms are different from zero, this is positive. And that implies that mu is greater than zero. So again, we find that not only the volumetric the f modulus has to be zero, but also the shear modulus, mu or g, have to be greater than zero. So greater than zero. Again, it says that we could imagine a material. What, what is the volume, the, 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 this young modulus, uh, this uh, second parameter mu? Let's go back a little bit and find Tau xy is equal g times gamma xy. Look, g and mu is the same. Eh? G and mu is the same. So look at this expression, or maybe better, to tau xy equal gamma xy times g. OK? Imagine that I produce a shear strain positive. What am I supposed to have? A shear, strain, a, a shear stress pro positive, I expect to have a decrease of angles, so a positive shear strain. Okay? So otherwise, if G was negative, it could happen that when applying a shear strain, which is positive, 
instead of reduction of angles, I had increasing of angle, which is not our perception. Again, that turns out that the fact that the second principle of thermodynamics, at the end of the day, produces that only materials with positive shear models are possible, are just saying, OK, you can imagine them. You can imagine materials with negative shear models, but they are not real materials. So at the end of the day, the conclusion of this little study is that what? Both the volumetric deformation models and the shear models, B or G, which is the same, are, have to be positive. Positive, never negative. If you see in one report that you have, been, you have to examine or to, to inform or whatever, that someone refers to these materials which are negative, then there is a mistake, or the guy who's doing the, the report is not a civil engineer. Okay? Look, we can also extract more conditions for that. Imagine now we have that k, which is greater than zero, can be expressed, and that's something that we saw, in terms of e and nu in that way, and mu, which is the shear modulus, can be expressed in terms of e and nu in this way. And now let's see what are the consequences. And both k and mu are positive. Okay. Since uh, this term is positive, let's admit that new is always positive. That's not strictly true. Eh? There are materials which have a negative Poisson ratio, but not in our materials, in regular materials. They are very complex materials, I would say, that these are materials which are specifically manufactured to get that. Okay? What is a material with a possible Poisson ratio? We have seen. If we have, if we pull that way, we have a contraction, a shrinkage in the other way. A, 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 a negative Poisson ratio would, would be the other way. If I pull that way, then there is an expansion. Okay? It could happen. But this is not in regular materials in nature. It are several very specific materials, almost them specifically with very complex microstructures like that. So now, let's assume that nu is equal to zero, even more. Just, just assume that nu is greater than minus one. So this is a positive value. I can tell you that there is no material in nature with nu smaller than minus one, okay? So if this is positive, and this is positive, that means that E is positive. So the Young model is positive. So at the end of the day, again, the second principle of thermodynamics, by producing that k is greater than zero, also produces that the Young modulus has to be greater than zero. There is no material in nature with a negative um, uh, young, uh, young coefficient, Young modulus. What about new? Now looking at that, at that here and here. New appears in the expression of the, of the k, and k is greater than zero. And epsilon, and e, sorry, the young modulus, we have proven that it's greater than zero. That means that this coefficient here is greater than zero too. And this means that nu is smaller than one half. That's why it's not possible in any material have a Poisson ratio greater than 0 0.5. In fact, we think that 0 0.5 is a limit case because when we have a Poisson ratio exactly 0.5, what happens about the volume? The volume preserves, okay? The volume, the material is incompressible, okay? In general, the volume increases, and in the limit case, there's a limit case in which when we place some stress, the volume keeps the same, which is new, new 0.5. If it was negative, what would happen? That by pulling the material, the volume, would reduce, okay? So that's the limit case. New equal 0.5, which from other considerations uh, gives the incompressible uh, limit, then uh, is a, a limit, a boundary of the values of new, and for our purposes, new is always greater than zero. I can tell you, with that exception of these specific materials, we have values of new which can be minus 0.25 or something like that, never more than that, then new ranges from zero to one half, okay? So take that into consideration. 
we have just talked a moment ago about our structural materials. How was E in the structural material? 200 megapascal, 300 megapascal. Okay, it's uh, positive. You never said minus 200 or minus 300. Okay? What about new? We have said 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Okay? Never, we have never said minus 0 0.2, minus 0 0.3. Okay? So depending on the materials, you have a material, typically we use a material sometimes, um, this uh, caoutchouc, caoutchouc, which is that material that we use plastic materials away. Plastic materials have, they have elastically, and the one that we use, this material that we use for supporting bridges, uh, neoprene. 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 Neoprene is a material which is made of caoutchouc made, which just is almost incompressible. And that there are some advantages of that. And that's why it's used for that. So it's almost incompressible. And that means it has a strong strength in, in terms of to produce compressors. That means that if you try to compress in all directions, isotropically, a neoprene, we can't. Okay? Because we cannot reduce the volume. So it's quite highly resisting to, com to confine uh, stresses, okay? Confining stresses. So that is, has a portion ratio approximately 0 0.5, 0 0.499. And by the way, this is a problem in numerical computations when you, maybe sometime some of you are involved in finite element analysis. Look, if you put exactly new equal point, uh, 0 0.5, the finite element code explodes because there are numerical problems with that. So the limit new equal 0 0.5, which is b rarely uh, found, but you can find theoretically in some analysis, take care with that, eh? take care with it. 